Okay, in this video we're going to do conditional probability and we'll look at these um, uh, twelve uh, examples 8 to 12. So, example 8, roll a dice, what is the probability you roll a 3? Right, write the answer down. If you roll a dice, what's the probability you roll a 3? So, if it's a fair dice, um, you know, probability rolling any particular number is um, the number of favorable outcomes, which is 1, Okay, so we got number of favorable out of number of uh, possible outcomes, right? So we have one favorable outcome, getting the number three. We have six possible outcomes, getting numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so imagine you roll a dice and don't look at it. What is the conditional probability that it is a three, given that your friend looks and tells you that it is less than five? Okay, first list all possible outcomes. So conditional probability simply means probability of something given, given that you already know um, another event has happened or you know some extra information. So it's not just what's the prob probability roll a three, it's probability, uh, so the dice has just been rolled, okay, dice has just been rolled, okay, and I won't show you what it is, but I will tell you that the value is less than five, less than five. So what's the probability that now that it's a three, that it's a three, given that you know that the value is less than five? Okay, see what I'm trying to say? So first list all the possible outcomes. So what numbers are less than five, basically? You've got one, could be two, it could be three, and it could be four. It could be any of these four possible outcomes. Couldn't be five because five isn't less than five. And three is one of those possible outcomes. So there's four possible outcomes, one, two, three, four. Three is one of them. And so the prob conditional probability that it is a three, and you can write it like this, it's probability of a three given that the value is, um, uh, less than 5. I guess I'll just write by shorthand less than 5. So probability that is a 3 given this this information less than 5 equals 1 possibility out of 4. So 1 quarter, right? So example 9, do this one yourself. Roll a dice, what is the probability you roll a 6? Write down the answer. Roll a dice, what's the probability you roll a 6? There's 1. It's 1 possibility out of 6, okay? Now I'm going to roll a dice and uh, don't look at it. What is the conditional probability that it is a six given that your friend looks at the dice and tells you that it is an even number? Okay, so I roll the dice, it is an even number. So it, so um, what's the probability now that it's uh, a six? So you would say the probability that the dice is a six given that it's an even number, right? equals what? So what are all the possible outcomes? Well, it can't be a 1 because that's not an even number. It could be a 2. It can't be a 3 because that's not an even number. It could be a 4. It can't be a 5. That's not an even number. It could be a 6, right? So there are three possible outcomes. It could be a 2, a 4, or a 6 now. Not all 6, just 3. We're down to three possibilities. Okay, so we've narrowed it down a bit. So six is one of one possibility out of one, two, three possibilities. So the probability it's a six, given that it's an even number, is one out of three. You agree with that? So, okay, in example ten, you roll two die and don't look at them. Okay, what is the conditional probability that one of the die is a four? Given that your friend looks and tells you that the sum of the dice is 10. Okay? So what we're looking for is what is the probability that one of the dice, the probability that we have a 4, one of the dice is a 4, given that the sum of the dice is 10. So we've rolled two dice. Okay? 
you don't look at them, so you don't know what they are, but you do know they add to 10. So I've rolled two dice. Um, I won't tell you what they are, but I will tell you they add to 10. Now, what's the probability that one of them is a 4? Any idea? Press pause and try and figure it out if you need more time. So one one important thing to do is to list all the possible outcomes. The two dice add up to give 10. What are all the possibilities that they could be? So like they can't be 1 and 6 because that adds to 7, right? They can't be 3 and f and, uh, and 5 because that adds to 8. Okay, so what are the possible... We know they add to 10. So what are all the possibilities of pairs of dice? Could you have a 5 and a 5? What else? You could have a a 6 and a 4, right? Anything else? Is that all? So it looks like there are two possibilities. Or are there more than two? You've got two different dice, remember. Okay? The mistake is to say that this probability is a half. The answer is not one half. One half is incorrect. One half is wrong. Okay? That would be the common mistake. So the two dice, I'll show you, try and explain this now. There could be a five and a five. That's one possibility for the pair of dice. That's one possibility. They could be a six and a four, right? That's another possibility. But there's a third possibility. The first dice could be a four, the other one could be a six. You can also have a four and a six. Now we have one, two, three possible outcomes. And two of these outcomes are favorable. Two of these sums of 10 have a 4 in them. Because the question was, what is the condition probability that one of the dice is a 4? That happens here, and it happens here. So we have two favorable outcomes out of three possible outcomes, right? And they're all equally likely. So the probability, condition probability is 2 over 3. So press pause, do example 11. You roll two die and don't look at them. What is the conditional probability that one of the dice is a three, given that your friend looks and tells you that the sum of the dice is six? The sum of the die is six. Press pause and try that. And if you have two dice on hand, that might help too. Okay. Did you try it? Hope you tried it. So we'll list all possible outcomes, right? We know that the sum is a 6. So we can write it like this. What's the probability that we have a 3 given that the sum of the dice is 6? Okay, so we know that the sum is 6. So that narrows it down. Conditional probability narrows things down. We've got this problem narrowed down to the dice being 1 and what? 1 and what makes 6? 1 and 5, right? That's sum 6, right? What else? You could have a 2 and a 4. What else? A 3 and a what? 3 and a 3, right? Any other possibilities? Is that all? Don't forget, the f sure, this could be 1 and 5. That's one possibility. But another possibility is 5 and 1. Where's 1? I don't have 1. Question mark. 5 and 1 is another possibility, right? So the, the first dice could be a 5, the next one could be a 1, and also, instead of just 2 and 4, the first dice could, that dice could be a 4, and this one could be a 2. So here's 4 and 2, right? But this dice could be a 2, and this dice could be a 4. That's another equally likely possibility when you roll two dice, isn't it? If you roll this dice and this dice, this could be 4, this could be 2. Or if you roll them, this could be 4, this could be 2. That's two completely different things. Because, hey, this dice is not the same as this one. They're different, right? He has his own, a mind of his own. This one's a vegetarian, this one likes chicken. So they're different dice. They, they're, they're different. They're different possibilities, right? So 4, 2... Five, one.
Okay, that gives us one, two, three, four, five possible outcomes, right? And how many of these are favorable? How many of these outcomes will have a three in them? Not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, only one. This is the only outcome where there's a dice that is a three. So we have one favorable outcome over five possible outcomes. The probability is 1 out of 5 or 20%, right? Okay, last one, example 12. And you'll probably get it wrong the first time, but that's okay. It's a little tricky. Okay, I'm going to toss two coins. Here they are. Here's the two coins. Just two coins. It's not that big deal. I'm going to toss them. I'm going to say one of the coins is a head. Now, what is the conditional probability? that the other coin is a tail given that one of the coins is a head interesting huh so we're asking for the probability that um, we have a tail if we're given one coin is a head I didn't tell you which one, I just said one of the coins is a head. Okay. Now what you should do is list all the possible outcomes for pairs of coins as regards head, tail, tail, head, 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 tail, tail, right? So if you list the pairs of outcomes then you might actually figure out the right answer. So what do you think it is right away? Any idea? So you toss, I've tossed two coins, one of the coins is a head What's the probability now? Now, now that I've told you one is ahead. What's the probability that the other one is a tail? Right? What's the probability that the other coin is a tail, given that one of the coins is a head? The probability, right? So, if we, if, please press pause and try and figure it out if you like. Okay, I'll just tell you this, one half is incorrect, that's not the right answer, one half is wrong, okay? List all possible outcomes, you can have a head and a head, right? You can have a head and a tail, you can have a tail and a head, or you can have a tail and a tail, right? One of those outcomes, by the way, is not part of this experiment at all, which one? shouldn't even be included. I'd said one of the coins is a head, right? So they can't be tail tail, so that discount that's discounted. So how many possible outcomes do we have? The coins could be head head, the first one could be a head, and the other one could be a tail, right? Or this one could be a tail and this one could be a head. So there's three possible outcomes. They could be both be heads this one could be a head and this one could be a tail or this one could be a tail and this one could be a head. Now that's three different just as equally likely outcomes. One, um, two, three and the question is what's the probability we have a tail given that one coin is a head? Well head head doesn't have a tail in it so we don't like him but we could have a head and a tail this way, this is a head, this is a tail, or we could have a tail and a head this way, right? So what I see there are one, two, two favorable outcomes out of three possible. So again, the tail tail is impossible, and these two guys are favorable. So the probability there is two out of three.